Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 7. This video presentation is going to be on Proposition 28 of Book 7. Now, in this proposition, we have two numbers, AB and BC, and if these two numbers, AB and BC, are relatively prime, then the AB will be relatively prime to the sum, which is AC, and BC will also be relatively prime to the sum. Now, this is the methodology or the symbology that was used in Euclid's book, and I'd like to stay true to that symbology because if you want to double check what I've done, maybe I've made a mistake and you're going to Euclid, it becomes a little easier to compare what I'm talking about than what's actually in the elements. However, I did find this confusing to follow, so I've rewritten it using the numbers A and B, and basically what we're saying here is that if A and B are relatively prime, then A is relatively prime to A plus B, and B is also relatively prime to A plus B. Now this prop proposition has two parts. This is the first part. I'll do the second part after. So let's begin the proof. Now we're going to prove this by using contradiction. So we are going to assume that AC and AB have a common denominator, D. So AC is measured by D and AB is measured by D. Now, since D measures AC and AB, if we subtract AB off and are left with BC, you can see that D also measures BC. So now we have D measures AC, D measures AB, and D also measures BC. So therefore, we have that AB and BC are measured by common um, number D, D not being equal to 1. And since AB and BC were defined as relatively prime, this cannot be true. So hence, that is our contradiction. So our original premise that AC and AB have a common measure of D, or a common denominator D, again, not equal to 1, this is invalid. And if there is no common measure D that measures both AC and AB, AB and AC are relatively prime. Using a similar argument, we can show that BC and AC are relatively prime. Same argument. So thus we've shown the first part of this proposition, which given two numbers, I'm going to go here now, given two numbers A and B, if they are relatively prime, then they're each relatively prime to the sum. Carrying on to the second part, we start off that the sum a plus b and one of its parts, a, is relatively prime, or a, c, and a, b are relatively prime, then a, b, and a, c, sorry, a, b, and a, c will also be relatively prime. So again, if the sum is prime, relatively prime, to one of its parts, then it will also be relatively prime to another part. So let's prove this, and again we're going to use contradiction. So in this case we're starting off by stating that AB and BC have a um, common measure, D, D not being equal to 1, and if AB and BC have the common measure of D, and since AC is the sum of them all, you can see that AC is also measured by D. So we have that the greatest common, or basically that AC and AB are relatively prime, and they have a common measure, which is impossible. So there is our contradiction. So the initial assumption that AB and BC have a common measure, D, is invalid. And if that's invalid, then A, B, and B, C are relatively prime. And again, doing it on this side, we're saying that if the sum and one part of the sum is relatively prime, then the two parts are also relatively prime. And that's it for this part 
of the proposition. So there we have it, we've covered both parts. And that's it.